Hi, welcome to March Mammal Madness 2024. I am Professor Katie Hind at Arizona State University and founding director of the March Mammal Madness Tournament. This quick video is to orient you to the key important details for the 2024 tournament. Other videos in our series will go into uh, how the tournament is designed, how the stories are told and created by the scientist narrators. And we also have a video specifically for educators on how to make the most of learning outcomes. But right now we're gonna talk about the key things for this year's tournament. Importantly, 2024 marks the 10th tournament since scientific illustrator Karen Henning began organizing an art team to do beautiful illustrations of all the combatants in the tournament. So this year, March Mammal Madness celebrates the arts and each division speaks to a different aspect of human creativity, from the literary arts, to the culinary arts, to the visual arts, to the performance arts. Let's dive in. The Epic Animals Division. These are species that have featured prominently in works of literary creativity, or have been named for creative written works. So we can think about animals featured in epic poetry and novels and great folklore, uh, screenplays, even modern music. These combatants will have tales to be told. The Connoisseur Critters Division. Animals have many traits for what they eat. So some herbivores have adaptations or traits that allow them to consume high levels of toxins that would otherwise make them other animals sick, but individual species are able to, to consume that because of their own traits. So gird your stomachs and get ready to toast these combatants for their dietary diversity. The Rainbow Collection Division. These brilliant beasties combine colors on their flamboyant forms, sometimes across a rainbow spectrum only they can see. Get ready to salute these striking smoke shows. And the Take a Bow Division. From a courtship dance to a broken wing fake out, to intimidating enemies, to waggle dance, directing buddies to budding flowers. Many animals are peak performers. Get ready to applaud these showboats. And we'll do this across an amazing bracket. Now for picking your champion. Look at your bracket and look at the pairs of combatants that are matched up for an encounter. We'll start with the wild card. Who do you think would win an encounter? a rainbow grasshopper, or a sparkle muffin peacock spider. Have you heard of these animals? Time to do some research. Who is bigger? Who is more predatory? Who gets startled easily and jumps away? At the end of the encounter, who do you think is still standing on the field of battle versus who has, has not succeeded? Have they run away? Have they hidden? Have they gotten a total knockout? What do you think is likely to happen? So you make that pick and then you send that wild card winner over to meet up in the first round against the number one seed, the painted wild dog. Now in a bracket like this, uh, number one seeds are considered the best in their division and the numbers go out from there. So the closer to one or the lower the number, the better ranked that combatant is, but it's not always perfect and there are upsets. So as you go through, think about, okay, whoever you had win the wild card, do you think that they will beat the painted wild dog or do you think they'll be defeated by the painted wild dog? What do you think happens between a Halloween crab and a Bornean rainbow toad, et cetera, et cetera, all the way through all of the round one winners. Then what you'll do is you'll look at who you thought won round one and then they will meet up in round two. So you make another set of predictions. So let's say you thought that the wild dog would indeed beat the wild card winner. And let's say you thought that the uh, pigeon would win its battle. So now the wild dog and the pigeon are going to have an encounter. Who do you think wins? Now, there's some really, really important things to keep in mind in making your predictions about the bracket. And that is, where does the encounter take place? This is, in the first rounds, really important. And we call this home habitat advantage. In the first three rounds of the tournament, the better seeded combatant, the lower the seed, the closer to one, the better it's ranked, gets home habitat advantage. The encounter will take place in, on their home court. The worst seed combatant, so the higher the seed number in the encounter, 
is the visiting team and will be magically transported to the encounter. So will this new habitat be a challenge? What happens if a tropical rainforest animal is all of a sudden transported to uh, like an ice shelf? How will it do? And it depends on all of the species. So think about how habitat is important for an animal's behavior and their physical health. Will it get cold? Will it be able to breathe? Does it have the ability to swim? These are things to think about in the first three rounds of matchup. Who gets home habitat advantage? When we get to round four, things will change. Starting in the elite trait, the habitat becomes randomized. So in 2024, the random habitats for the elite trait, the final roar, and the championship battles are a tidal glacier, where a glacier meets uh, the ocean, the pelagic realm or the open ocean, the peatland, uh, which is a very kind of special sort of habitat, and the woodland savanna. Now, you only find out where the battle's taking place when the battle encounter happens in the tournament. So you have to make predictions and you can either decide uh, to hope that your preferred species get a habitat that's good for them, or you can hedge your guesses and pick uh, species that are gonna do well in the most different kinds of habitats. This is something to consider as you are estimating your probabilities and outcomes. You know, do you go for the hope for luck or do you think about species that have general adaptations for lots of habitats? For long-term players of this tournament, you know that we have live announced the play-by-plays of the encounters on the social media platform Twitter. And 2024 is going to be the last year we do that. But that social media platform has really changed lately. The local ecosystem is uh, a more hostile terrain than it once was. And so what we're going to do is make sure that there are really rich resources about the tournament uh, encounters on the ASU LibGuide so that people do not have to use any particular social media platform to find out what happens in the science underlying the encounter outcomes. Uh, so you can check out uh, the play-by-play -play transcript PDFs, and we're also going to have some really nice read all about it that go into the details of the encounter. Of course, MC Marmot Rodent Roundtable is going to keep on rocking the recaps. But if you are particularly outraged by a battle encounter upset uh, and you really want to dig into what happened, uh, check out those resources at the LibGuide. Now, there are always going to be upsets. There are going to be unanticipated outcomes. The champion you picked is out by the end of the second round. That's okay. As mentioned, there will be upsets and unexpected defeats and unanticipated victories. So on the evening of March 25th, after the second round of battles are over, you can swing over to the LibGuide and become a Busted Bracketeer. All you have to do is download a Busted Bracketeer bracket that starts with the Sweet 16. And you can make new predictions of the combatants that are still in it to win it based on what you've learned from the first two rounds of the tournament uh, about the combatants and how the tournament works. And you can keep on cheering for your new chosen champion in the, the later rounds. Because there are many ways to play March Mammal Madness, but there's only one way to win, and that's by learning. As our tournament slogan says, if you're learning, you're winning. Explore the many animals, the couple plants, and the one fun guy as scientists weave science into story and the combatants go on a journey of action and glory in 2024. Thanks for playing March Mammal Mad. Have you heard of these animals? Time to do some research. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start this one over.